Welcome back, students of history and appreciators of expertise. I'm Frank, a history expert with a history degree, and I'm trying something a little different tonight. Uh, since certain people who do not have degrees or expertise uh, have apparently got nothing better to do than attack the minutia of inspiring historical educational content um, by complaining that earlier videos maybe jiggled around a little bit, I'm filming on a stable table here, as it were. And uh, the benefit of that is behind me is part of the McCowan Orchid Collection, one of the most impressive orchid collections in the world. And uh, with a trustee who has orchid expertise that is um, beyond the expertise of most experts in most fields. So even more exciting is the two additional history experts who are going to join me uh, this evening. Um, experts Honeycutt and Stosich. Uh, they have qualifications nearly as impressive as mine own. Uh, Mr. Honeycutt has a degree from an accredited North American university uh, with expertise in everything from computer to Mantique appreciation, while expert Stosich has degrees and expertise in everything from nuclear investigation to Mantique appreciation. Uh, they will be joining us by chat, um, not on camera, but they'll be following along with the action as it happens. Uh, although I've sent them other historical some antiques and items to peruse, per se, and evaluate. Uh, when I showed them tonight's Mantique, they were both extremely excited to join me as contributors. And who can blame them? Uh, this Mantique from the McGovern Collection, uh, it's, I'd like to give a shout out to the, to the curator and the trustee and the owner of the McGovern Collection, William, uh, for whom, but I would not be able to do this. So that's, that's something that I am happy to live with. Uh, so this is an American World War II improvised trench knife or fighting knife. Um, this was, the blade has been ground down from a Nicholson file. You can sort of see the remainder of the, or just part of the Nicholson there in the, on the Ricasso, that is called. Um, and files were used to sharpen blades, ironically, and now it is one, uh, which meant that the steel was strong enough that they could function effect, or effectively rather as a blade. Uh, so you'll find a lot of makeshift fighting knives um, that have been cut from files, particularly in World War II. Uh, many Americans actually needed these in the war. Uh, they needed improvised knives because they weren't issued with their own knives. Uh, American soldiers weren't, um, even when they requested them. I have a friend, actually, whose grandfather fought in the Pacific Theater, and he made his own fighting knife. He, like so many, uh, cut one down from a file and made his own uh, hilt, his own grip and everything. And he waded through the I mean, he did a beach landing. And so the, he, being in the warm Pacific theater, the uh, air and everything, the water, the moisture, it swelled up the stock of his gun. And he couldn't work the bolt, couldn't pull the bolt back on his, on his garand. So he used his knife to uh, cut off a chunk of the wood that was blocking the bolt. And he was able to use his gun. And he says that there is just no question that he would have died. If, if he hadn't been able to do that, they, uh, you know, found themselves under heavy fire. So these knives could save soldiers' lives in more ways than one. Um, anyway, so this knife, uh, used for a fighting knife, um, based on the historical expertise I have in my degree, I can tell you that they would have been used in two ways. I can show you. So one way would have been like this, like, like a, a stabbing motion, and the other would have been like, like that, like a slicing motion. Stab, slice. So sort of a poke. So uh, that's history expertise there. That's, that is actually how these knives would have been used in war. Um, so you're welcome. Uh, so um, the one thing I'm not sure about, despite understanding the blade, um, and I am pretty sure, I just have a couple of minor questions, but I'm not sure why the grip of the knife was made this way or what its, um, what its, its purpose is. But uh, being um, friends with many experts uh, in, the, in the field, that is exactly what Mr. Honeycutt and Stosich are going to help me with tonight. They inform me that they know exactly what this is for, and uh, they're going to help out. And they were, like I said, they were extremely excited when they saw it, so I'm excited to hear what they have to say. Uh, so here in the chat, okay, Mr. Stosich says, the handle of that knife was used as a toothbrush. No, a toothbrush. No, uh, expert Honeycutt says, yep, no question. That is a trench toothbrush for use on the front lines. Yeah, um, well, I'm, you know, now that I think about it, um, I'm pretty sure that I actually am familiar with that, with the trench toothbrush 
in this shape, um, having, having encountered that in the course of my studies and expertise. So I think they're right. I think I, think I do remember that. Uh, expert Sosich says, simulate brushing your teeth with it to show people how it's used. Okay, yep, I think that'll probably help. So, I mean, like any toothbrush, I guess it would have been like, like that. Um, let's see, uh, expert Honeycutt says, LOL, yes, with an exclamation point, you are killing it. Well, thank you, sir. Uh, not sure why he laughed out loud, but I guess it was my toothbrushing skill, I suppose. Uh, expert Stosich replies, Oh shit, no, oh expletive. In case we both come visit, that would be lovely. Uh, you should grab your bone dagger and see if you can brush with two of those at once. I'm not uh, entirely sure how that would be helpful if you came to visit, but I actually do have my bone dagger. I was considering doing a, a whole video on improvised fighting knives, um, but I, but uh, yeah, I suppose, anyway, I suppose it, it would be like this, which is, Yeah, and then spit out the toothpaste. Okay, expert Stosich says, ha ha ha. This is funny. I, um, yes, uh, capitalized. Oh my God, that is so good. Expert Honeycutt says, LOL, amazing Frank, except I'm a little hurt that you spit out the toothpaste. Expert Stosich says, for real, if you loved me, you would swallow the toothpaste. That stings, bro. Ha ha ha. So, um... Many of you may not uh, get the joke. Uh, you may not understand the reason they are laughing. And there's no shame in that. Um, these are history reference jokes, and I, I do get it. I get these jokes. And, <laughs> yeah, it is it is very funny. Um, and perhaps I will go into more detail about why it's funny in the next video, but we just don't have time for that right now. Oh, uh, okay, Expert Honeycutt says, Keep it up. Looking forward to seeing you. I can't wait to come. Huh. Latin spelling of come. Um, expertise in linguistics is definitely one feature of history expertise in general. Expert Stosich says, I am really, capitalized, looking forward to when I come as well. The same spelling. Um, keep practicing your oral ellipses, your oral ellipses hygiene. Okay, well, I can't wait for you two to come either. Um, what a time the three of us shall have, no? Uh, and that seems like a good place to wrap up for the evening. So huge thanks to... My degree to experts, uh, Honeycutt and Stosich, um, your expertise has been invaluable here and reminded me of things that I already knew. Um, and uh, a toothbrush, you know, you learn something new every day. Well, I mean, you all learn something new every day that I post one of these videos. These are things that I already knew, um, being an expert and having a degree. It's already familiar with this stuff. So until next time, good night.